Today, I'm playing No Rest for the Wicked, an action RPG from the developers of Ori and the Blind Forest. This game blends elements of Diablo and Dark Souls with stunning aesthetics. Before I continue talking, let's watch the opening. As always, please like and subscribe. It could be your good deed for the day. Said the pestilence turned men's faces inside out. Made them grow limbs where none should be. But the world was nearly lost in its wake. And she prayed. The Sarum would never need to return. We should turn back while we still can. It's an island, not a fairy tale. Oh, this is a fool's errand. There's no sum worth bringing the likes of them to shore. Before I share my first impressions, let's discuss what this game has to offer. This game blends the intense action of Diablo with the intricate strategy of Dark Souls, offering a complex and engaging experience. It features a narrative depth similar to Game of Thrones. Aiming for the detailed storytelling found in the books, rather than the more controversial later seasons of the TV series. In terms of gameplay, the game is rich with content, including an extensive array of bosses and numerous side quests that contribute to a layered gaming experience. Players can customise their characters extensively thanks to a comprehensive system of weapons, armour and skills, which can be further refined through a crafting system that incorporates enchantments, runes and gems. Additionally, the game introduces the Serim Crucible, a replayable dungeon that adds depth and variety to the game, ensuring that players have reasons to come back. Completing the suite of features are daily and weekly bounties and challenges designed to keep players engaged by consistently offering new content and objectives. During the early access phase, the game will expand significantly to include a variety of new features designed to enhance player engagement and gameplay diversity. This expansion will introduce farming mechanics and a multiplayer mode supporting four-player co-op, which will allow players to team up and tackle challenges together. Additionally, a PvP mode will be added, offering competitive play options. The game's narrative will be enriched with more story content and additional chapters, deepening the existing plot and character development. Players can also expect a larger map that will include new areas to explore, providing a broader world within which to adventure. Furthermore, the game will see an increase in the variety of weapons, armour and rare items available enhancing the customization options for players. The Arsenal expansion will be complemented by an increase in the number of enemies, including more bosses, which promises to make the game more challenging. The Serim Crucible dungeon will also be expanded with more floors, adding to its replayability. Finally, new bounties and challenges will be introduced regularly, keeping the game fresh and engaging for returning players. Now for a first impression, as you can see, it's a real early access title. It has quite a few graphical issues when small cutscenes start and the responsiveness is not always great. However, the game feels very unique. The impact of the combat is absolutely amazing and I love the graphical style. Besides that, it doesn't feel as difficult as other Souls-like games, which is great for me because I struggle with those. Based on this first impression, I'm very excited to play further and can't wait to see more. Once I've played a bit more, I'll post some additional gameplay with further impressions. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Are you going to play this game or will you wait until it has a few more patches? Please consider liking and subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.
I'd save it for gentler seas. Perhaps a prayer before landfall? Let's go. Yeah. 
Too late for any of us. <laughs> 